to open them up to the book of Zechariah, the book of Zechariah. You can open your Bibles to the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, Zechariah, chapter 12. And my goal for the next couple of weeks, when I started this last week, was for you to really try to understand the Bible as a whole and God's relationship with the nation of Israel. If the Bible and history is ever going to make any sense to you, you have to understand the nation of Israel and God's relationship to the nation of Israel. And it's very significant that you and I understand this because it's all about the nation of Israel in reality. And um, it's about the covenants and the promises that God <coughs> made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. And if the Bible's ever going to make any sense to you, you have to go back to the book of Genesis and understand those covenants and those promises that were given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because those covenants and those promises are being fulfilled in our country and in our world. And so when we begin to read the word of God and understand the Bible as a whole, we have to understand that God has a chosen people. God has a distinct people. God has a, a unique nation. And it's not the United States. It's the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that why we were blessed as a nation, it was because of our support for the nation of Israel. That everything is about the nation of Israel. That is God's focal point in what he is doing and what God will accomplish. God made several promises to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And those promises are being fulfilled throughout human history. That is what God is doing. God has taken those promises and he has been fulfilling those promises for thousands of years now. And so when we study the Bible, if we're ever going to make sense of the word of God, if we're ever going to make sense of human history, if anything is really going to make sense to us, we have to understand the word of God as a whole by studying the nation of Israel and by studying the minor prophets. I know a lot of Christians don't like the minor prophets. They don't like to read the minor prophets because they really identify with the judgment of a holy and a righteous God. But if you're ever going to make sense of this thing, you have to go back to the Old Testament and you've got to look at the promises that were given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you've got to follow those promises throughout the word of God and realize what was taking place in history okay and so we've been looking at this and I, I showed you last week how um, Biden we won't even call him president but he had given uh, 235 million dollars to the Palestinians okay now you and I would say well Pastor Mike what does that have to do with us today it has everything to do with us as a nation do you understand that Amen. it has everything to do with us if you study the word of God in any detail you're going to know the story of Balaam and Barak and, and what they tried to do is they Balak tried to hire Balaam to go against God's people. This theme is occurring throughout the word of God, where different countries and different nations would try to annihilate, destroy God's chosen people. That is what has happened throughout the history. We've seen this with Hitler. We've seen this throughout the word of God with Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians and the, and the, uh, the Persians and the Philistines and these different nations, the Syrians, and they wanted to wipe out the Jewish people. Now what we have experiencing now is that we have a culture that is producing an anti-Semitism anti spirit where people are going against the Jewish people and literally they believe that the land or some, somewhat the Palestinians has some right to that land. Well, biblically speaking, they have no right to that land whatsoever. Does everyone understand how that Amen. works a little bit? Okay, that land was given to them by God himself. That land was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the land that the Palestinians are on, and the land that the Muslims are on right now, that land does not belong to them. That land belongs to the Jews. It only belongs to the Jews, and it belongs to nobody else. That is the land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that land was granted to the nation of Israel. Now, when we study the Bible, what God has done is God has given us a prequel of what is going on. So you and I, we can read the Word of God, we can study the Bible, and we can see what God is doing through history by studying the Word of God and by studying the times of the nation of Israel. So you and I, here we are, we look at Bible prophecies, 
that were written thousands of years ago that expound to you and I what is happening right now and right here. That's why we study the Word of God. We study the Word of God so we're in tune with what is taking place in our culture right now. One of the best things that you can do is read and study the Word of God. The Bible says, study to show yourself what? <laughs> Approved unto God as a what? Workman that needeth what? Not be ashamed, rightly what people? Dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. So you and I are supposed to study the word of God as workmen that needeth not be ashamed, so we know how to what? Rightly divide the word of truth. So we understand dispensationally and doctrinally what God is doing in the world, in the culture that we live in right now. Listen, the prophets in the Old Testament, one of the things they had to do is they had to go to the people and explain to the people of the condition that the nation of Israel was in. For example, you have Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of these different prophets, they would go to the nation of Israel when they rebelled against God and they would deal with them on the culture or on the direction that the culture was going in. Does everyone understand that? So the prophet's job was to convey the judgment of God. The prophet's job was to convey what God was doing in the culture at that time and at those moments. Does everyone understand that? That is why it's absolutely essential that I preach on these topics that are happening in our country right now because that is declaring the word of God and know what else it does. It makes the word of God come alive, doesn't it? It helps you to see the direction of what is going on. It helps you to see and it helps you to take the Bible and to apply it to what is happening in the culture right now and what is happening with Israel right now and what, ha and what must happen in our country as a whole. So these are the things that we have to understand. This is why we have to take this type of biblical approach in studying what is going on, okay? And so those minor prophets that are in the Bible, they're given to us for a reason. How many guys have ever read all of the minor prophets? Put your hands up. That's it. Put your hands up if you read all of the minor prophets. Okay, that's a little bit better. All right, good. Now, listen guys, you have to read the minor prophets because if you don't, you don't know what's going on. Because the minor prophets, they were not only prophesying to the nation of Israel about the time frame they were in, but they all have a prophetic application that points to the what? To the end times that we're living in now. Does everyone understand that? Mm -hmm. So God just didn't put those minor prophets in there so you and I could learn about the history of Israel. Listen. History repeats its what? Self. Repeats yeah. itself. So what we do is we study the word of God and we know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for what? Doctrine. For doctrine for what? Reproof for what? And correction, instruction in righteousness that the man, may, man of God may be perfect, truly really furnished unto all good works. But the Bible has three applications. It has a historical, it has a prophetical or a doctrinal, and then it has a personal application. Because God works in threes. He does everything in threes. Time, past, present, and future. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You have a body, soul, and spirit. Protons, neutrons, electrons. Everything God does, He does in threes. So God has given us the Word of God that tells us what is going to be happening in the future. God reveals to us the culture of the people. Now, once again, when God revealed the culture of the people, you notice how he did it. He always did it by the way the people were acting, by the way they were thinking, by the way they were living. How many guys were here when I preached on, on society gone backwards? Okay, if you haven't watched that message, try to watch it because we went through the book of Isaiah chapter 59. And when we went through Isaiah 59, if you were reading those things, it, you could you just look at the world and be like, that's where we are right now, right? You were thinking that. You're like, that's where we are right now. That is what is happening in the culture. That is what is happening in the society. And God has told us that we are to watch the culture of society. If you think about 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul writes to young Timothy. He says, knowing this first, okay, that in the latter times, men are going to what? They're going to be lovers of their own selves. So in the last days, they're going to be lovers of their own selves. So what do we do? We study the nature of human nature. We study the direction of the culture. What direction is the culture going in? Think about this just for a minute. When God looked down in Noah's time, and God looked down, and he seen that man's heart and his imagination was what? It was evil. continually evil. So what did God do? God destroyed the world. Based on what? It was based on the culture and the nature of man's heart. 
It was based on the direction that people were going in. So the minor prophets and the prophets, the major prophets, they would speak and they would address the culture of the people. They would address the king as a leader. Do you guys understand that? Mm -hmm. And we, we've seen in a whole message I did on the sovereignty of God, how God raises up certain leaders. Mm -hmm. We've seen how God rose up. God allowed Saul to be the king over Israel because of the condition of the people of Israel. And they didn't want a good king. They didn't want God to rule over them. And God says, I'll give you exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. And so we experience this with, in society and the culture where God gives people basically what they want. So our job in the time frame that we live in right now as people of God, as saved people, we have a tremendous responsibility. Well, what is that responsibility? Is to reveal Jesus Christ. Well, how do we reveal Jesus Christ? Not just through the area of salvation, because listen, people struggle with that. But when you address the culture and the time of what things are happening and you show them in the word of God, this is the direction and the comprehension that people will begin to understand. So we have to be able to convey these messages clearly in the word of God. And what is conspiring with Israel and our country is a huge part of biblical prophecy that has to be fulfilled. Does everyone understand that? Okay. Our country once stood behind Israel. Now, all of a sudden, we're seeing a nation that is beginning to progress away from the nation of Israel. Now, remember, the promises that God made to Abraham was what? I will what? Bless them that what? Bless thee, and I will what? Curse them that curse thee. That was pertaining to the nations. God says, those nations that bless you, I will bless them. Those nations that curse you, I will what? I will curse them. That is a primary doctrine Throughout the word of God. If you're ever going to understand the Bible. And if you're ever going to understand history. And if you're ever going to understand what's happening in this world right now. You have to look to the nation of Israel. And see what is going on. That's why we have to study these portions of scripture. Okay. So let's look at Zechariah chapter 12. 1 through 3. Zechariah chapter 12. 1 through 3. Now look at this. The burden of the word of the law of the of the Lord for Israel. So God had a burden for Israel. God loves his people. If you study the Bible, you will see that in different portions of scripture, Israel is called the son of God. Israel is called God's elect. Israel is called the bride of God. So God has this unique relationship with Israel all the way back which stems to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. Actually, let's look at that. Genesis, go to Genesis really quick. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. Now watch this, right? God is speaking to Abraham here. And back up to verse 2, right? Actually, back up to verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out, look at this, Get thee out of thy, of thy, kind, get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show thee. God says, I'm going to show you some, some land that's going to be yours, and I'm going to give it to you. Look at verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, nation of Israel, and I will bless thee, and make, look at this, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now watch this in verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be what? Blessed. Be blessed. Now we know that that is through the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now we have to understand God's significant relationship with Israel. If you're ever going to understand the Bible, that's one of the most important things you have to understand. So let's look at Je Zechariah chapter 12, 1 through 3 now. The burden of the, of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord. This is what God is saying to the nation of Israel. Which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth. God says he's reminding, I am the creator of all things. I'm the one who stretched forth the heavens. I'm the one who's created all things. And formed the spirit of man within him. Do you understand that? God formed the spirit of man within you. The Bible says in him we live, we move, and we have our being. It's because of God we breathe. It's because of God we exist. It's because of God we move. It's because of God we think. It's because of God our heart is beating. It's because of God we live. Amen. He goes on. Behold, I will make Jerusalem 
a cup of trembling unto what? All, All the people round about. Now pause here for a minute. He says, I'm going to make Jerusalem a cup of trembling to the people what? Round about. round about. Now stay with me. He says, I'm going to take Jerusalem and Jerusalem is going to shake up the Middle East. Amen. And it's not because of them. Do you remember what we've seen? How it goes all the way back to Ishmael. Mm -hmm. It literally traces all the way back to Ishmael when Abraham took a woman that was an Egyptian and had a child with that woman. And God says that that child was going to be a what? Wild a wild man. Amen. And his hand will be against what? Every man. Amen. And every man's hand will be against what? Amen. Him. Palestinians. Mm -hmm. That's the whole lineage. And in their minds, it was Isaac. It was Ishmael who was taken up to be offered in Mount Moriah. That's what they believed. In their minds, well, Ishmael was the firstborn. Therefore, the land is what? It's ours. That's why they have such a deep hatred for the Jews. But God told Abraham, no, no, no. In Isaac shall thy seed be what? Blessed. And by the way, what did God tell Abraham to do with Ishmael? He said, kick him out. He said, that wasn't nice. See, here's what we have to understand. God doesn't think like you, and he doesn't think like me. That's right. Thanks, God. Yeah. I'm going to prove a few things to you this morning. Amen. You guys have to understand. When it comes to people in nations, the Jewish people are God's chosen people. Amen. And I know that that's not even a popular thing to say. Mm -hmm. All over the country, all over the world right now, you've got people supporting Palestine and the Palestinians over the nation of Israel. Well, who caused the, who, 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 who shot the first missile? It wasn't the Jews. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing this spirit of anti-Semitism creeping up where there's a strong hatred for the Jew. And that hatred for the Jew, pay attention, people, it's going to get stronger and it's going to get stronger and it's going to get stronger. Amen. Until all nations are turned against the Jews. Mm -hmm. That is a prophecy in the Bible. When you turn on your news, the good news, the right news, yeah. they'll show you the attacks on Israel. They'll show you different parts of our country in people that are in support of the Palestinians. They will show you in different parts of the world where people are protesting to come against Israel and then no longer in support of the nation of Israel. <coughs> When President Biden gave $235 million to the Palestinians, he funded an attack on God's chosen people. That brings a curse upon our country. And I know a lot of Christians would be like, Pastor Mike, that's not true. Oh, I don't care what they say. Let God be true and every man alive. Amen. If a hitman pays somebody to kill somebody, Who's guilty? The guy, not only the guy who kills him, but the guy who paid the who paid the price. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand what is happening. Now, by the way, before it all before you get all crazy, does everyone understand that this has to happen? Do you guys agree Amen. with that? It has to happen because the scriptures must be fulfilled. God says that He's going to bring all what nations against Jerusalem, Amen. North America, South America, Africa, Europe. He's going to bring all nations against them. Okay? And you know where it's going to stem from? The United Nations, folks. Amen. That is the, exactly, that is the most corrupt organization. And it's completely satanic and demonic. And it's nothing more than the system of Antichrist. Tying everything together. So God says here that he's going to make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. Look, look at it says, the burden of the word of the Lord to uh, Israel, the Lord would stretch forth the heavens and lay at the foundation of the earth that formed the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about. So that's the, 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 the countries around them, the nations around them. Now watch this. When they shall be in siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. To be in siege, basically it means to be camped out and to be putting them under attack. 
When in the Old Testament they would besiege a nation, they would besiege Israel. It means that they would come against them in attack. That's what that means. That's what we're experiencing. Now look at this. And in that day, the return of Jesus Christ, will I make Jerusalem, look at this, a burdensome stone for all people. Did you guys see that? God saying, man, Israel is going to be the problem. It's going to be a burdensome to all people because all nations are going to hate those Jews and say that those Jews are creating all the problems. And in reality, they're not creating all the problems. The enemy is trying to destroy God's chosen people. And in that day, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome, a burdensome stone for all people. Now watch this. All that burden themselves with it, Jerusalem, Shall be what? Did you guys see that? Mm -hmm. God says, you burden, you come against Israel, I'm going to cut you guys in pieces. Mm -hmm. And he's going to do it with the sharp sword that comes out of his mouth. And he's going to smite the nations. Look at this. Though all people of the earth, say it out loud, be what? Gathered together against, Gather together against what? You see that? Against it, which is Jerusalem. He says, all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. What do you think everything is coming to a climax to? Palestinians, everywhere you go, all over the world, you look on the news, the news is blaming Jerusalem. There are people who aren't even Palestine that are in support of Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Did you guys know that? Or am I the only one that sees yeah, stuff that goes on here? Okay, good. You guys are with me now? Some of you guys are like, Pastor Mike, I didn't hear any of this. Well, I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> but understand what's happening in this world. There are people who aren't even Palestinian, and they're like, oh, get them Jews out of the land. It's about, they're blaming the Jews for everything. Mm -hmm. Because they are God's anointed. They're God's chosen. They're God's people. Now, not to blow up every, you know, not to burst everybody's bubble, but I want to just help you just understand a couple portions of scripture here. Go to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Now, I know I gave you a ton of scriptures last week, but I'm going to give you a lot this week as well to support everything I'm showing you in the Bible. Now, look at this. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15, right? Behold, the nations, plural, are as a drop of a bucket and are counted and are counted as what? Small, look at this, small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as very little thing. Now look at verse 17. All nations before him are as what people? Nothing. Nothing. And they are counted to him less than what? Less than nothing. You guys see that? Minus mm -hmm. zero. That's some serious stuff how God sees it. See, once again, our human activity comes in there and is like, how could Isaiah write something like that? You want to know why he wrote it? God told him to write it. Because God was comparing these nations to his nation Israel. And he says, listen, when he compares other nations to his people, we're nothing but a drop in the bucket. And I count it as what? Nothing. And that made everybody feel real good, didn't it? Amen. Amen. But hey, I'll make you feel better. But if you're in Christ, you're in the seed of Israel. Amen. Right? If you're in Christ, you are God's elect. You are God's anointed. If you're in Christ, you are part of the chosen. The Bible says that if you be in Christ, and you, you are what? Abraham's what people? Seed. seed. I mean, man. He says, all nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing. And vanity, which means nothing, worthless. Look at Numbers 23. Numbers 23, verse 9, look at this. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and look at this, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. God told his people to be what? A separate people. How many guys knew that in the Bible? 
God told his people in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, don't have anything to do with those nations. Now, by the way, God told his people to go in and to kill those other nations. How many guys knew that? He told his people, you kill the men, you kill the women, you kill the babies, and you kill the sucklings, and you kill the animals. You wipe them out. Because there is a what? A drop in the bucket and count it as what? Nothing. No. In the culture that we live in, would that be popular? <laughs> no. By all means, no. God told his people, don't make any leads with those people. They're a separate people unto God. A separate people. A sanctified people. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. Look at this, right? God is talking to his people. He says, For thou art a holy people, or thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord God hath chosen thee, Israel, the Jewish people, to be, say it out loud, what? A special people unto himself, above, say it out loud, all people that are upon the face of the earth. God says, you are my chosen people. You are my elect. Israel is my elect above all people. Notice how racism is playing a huge thing in our society. Mm -hmm. Huge factor. But notice the double standard of racism. Mm -hmm. So now everybody's in support of the Palestinians but coming against the Jews. Double standard in racism. Well, these culture, these people, these people, no, no, it's God's people. It's the Jewish people. Look at Exodus chapter 19. Go to Exodus 19, right? Exodus 19 and verse 5. It says, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be, look at God calls them, a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. And look at this. And a holy nation. Okay? These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now remember back when Moses met God at the burning bush. When he first met him. God tells Moses, take off your, your shoes. Take off your, shoes, your sandals, right? He says, for you are on what? Holy, holy ground. ground. Now stay with me, right? So God calls these people a what? A holy people, and this is what? Holy, holy ground. ground. Now stay with me. Do you know why God drove out those other nations? Because they were on, check it out, holy ground that didn't belong to them. So God says that these people have polluted the ground, the land. And he says, and I want you, my people, the Jews, to kill every one of them and to drive them out because they are on my holy ground. That land in the Middle East, that's that they still call to this day the what? The, the holy land. land. Well, what are the Muslims doing there? What are the Palestinians doing there? And all these other nations that have besieged it, and they're squeezing in the nation of Israel to possess more and more of the land. The battle is fought because it's holy land and the enemy wants to desecrate. The devil wants to desecrate the holy land and the what? The holy people, mm -hmm. the children of God. So we've seen that last week. So let, let me give you a couple more things. Just stay with me on this, right? Because it's very important that we begin to grasp these principles, okay? So I want you to turn to the book of Exodus 19 and verse 5. Look at Exodus 19 and verse 5. Look at this. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my, and keep my covenant, watch this, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all, above all people. See that? Above, above any other nation in the world. Okay? For all the earth is mine. Now, pause there for a minute. God says, listen, the whole world is mine. And I've taken what is mine and I've given it to you, this portion of land that belongs to you, the Jewish people. Now go back to Deuteronomy chapter Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. Now watch it. 
Deuteronomy 7. If it's a holy land, then that means there must be a holy people on the land. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a, say it out loud, special, special people. Pe look at that. Special people unto himself. Above, say it out loud, all, all the people that are upon the face of the earth. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. You want to talk about racism? God says, hey, my people are the most special people in the world to me. Aren't you glad you got saved? Yep. And that puts you in with the nation of Israel, right? Amen. Because the Bible says you were grafted in. Amen. And you become Abraham's seed. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. Amen. But guys, Amen. if you're not saved, where does that leave you? It leaves you in no other condition than those other pagan nations in the Old Testament that knew not God. And the Bible says that they were aliens and what else? Enemies. Enemies. And enemies of God. They were God's enemies and aliens. And God says they were outcasts. You see why it's so important to be saved? Amen. You see why it's so important to be Amen. born again? Do you see why it's so important to be grafted into the nation of Israel and to be born of the seed of God. We were not born of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Amen. Because now that seed lives within us and that seed is Christ. And if we be Christ, then are we Abraham's offspring. Oh, yeah. Guys, this world is against God's people. Mm -hmm. And it's climaxing. It's climaxing at a ratio that it never has before, and especially in our country right now. It clearly says it right there. It says, you're gonna be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Look at verse seven. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than, than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. Yeah. But because the Lord, look at this, loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, brought him out of Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, uh, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, he is God, faithful God, which keepeth the covenant and mercy with them that love him and keepeth his commandments. To, ten, to, uh, to, to, I'm sorry, to a thousand generations and repay them that hate him. Look at this, to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He will repay him to his face. I want you to pause there for a minute, okay? This is what a lot of people don't understand. That is a prophecy that will be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. The people that hate God, God, Jesus Christ, will repay them to their what? Face. face to face. Now stay with me on this, right? It's not only at the great white throne judgment when they're face to face with God, but it's also in the battle of Armageddon. Mm -hmm. When Jesus comes back and it says out of his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword that he should watch and swipe the nations. Well, what is the battle of Armageddon? You know what it is? It's when the whole world, all the countries come against Israel in support of the UN. And God says, he that touches you, Israel, he touches the apple of my eye. Amen. And God says, I will shake those nations and I will repay them to their own face. Amen. When people hate the Jews, understand this, right? It's the spirit behind them, which is God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They don't hate them collectively, it's what's behind them. Amen. The other nations hated the Jewish people because of their God and their belief system. Mm -hmm. People hate the nation of Israel because of God. Because of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You want to know why people hate you as a Christian? Because of Jesus Christ. Jesus said if they hate me, they're going to what? They're going to hate you. The Bible says that they hated Jesus without cause. Well, why did they hate Jesus? Because men love 
darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They hate you because the light of the glorious gospel is in you. They hate the nation of Israel because they serve the one and the true and the only God. And the world wants to believe in multiple gods. The world wants to believe that everyone's religion is fine. Oh, but you Christians and you Jews, you guys segregate because you believe that your God is the one and the only true God. You see how all that works? Mm -hmm. Guys, persecution's coming. It's coming. It's going to, just as it's going to heighten on the nation of Israel, it's going to heighten on God's people. Jesus said, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Now let's keep going on here. Let's look at this a little bit further, right? Look at verse 8. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath that he had sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out, out of the mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of, of bondage from the hand of uh, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now watch this. Now therefore, the Lord thy God, he is God, he, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth his covenant and mercy with them that love him and keepeth his commandments to thousands of generations. And look at this. And repayeth them that hate him to their faith to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He will repay him to his face. Now look at this. Go to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 14. Deuteronomy chapter 14. Okay. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee. Look at this. To be a peculiar people unto himself above all. Say it aloud. Above all nations that are upon the earth. God says you are my number one. Above all nations that are upon this earth. Look at Deuteronomy 26, verse 18. Deuteronomy 26, verse 18. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he hath promised thee and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments and to, and to make thee high above. Look at this. He says, I'm going to make you high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God that he has spoken. So we're seeing this theme over and over and over on how God views and looks at his people. So now what we have to do is we have to understand, like, okay, what are we seeing happening in the world right now? Why is everybody turning against Jerusalem? Why are people in support of the Palestinians? Why are all these things happening right in front of our eyes. Well, once again, what we've seen from the Word of God is that these things must come to fruition. All of the things we're studying right now, these things have to happen. Mm -hmm. These things are clear in the Word of God, which God has revealed to us. Mm -hmm. These things are more than clear. So let's look at um, Zechariah chapter 14 now. Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah, we'll look at chapter 14, and we'll pick it right up in verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Now, we know what this is. We know that this is the return of Jesus Christ. The day of the Lord takes place at the end of the great tribulation period, okay? But there are things that have to conspire before the next dispensation comes in. Now, look at this. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather, say that out loud, everyone. All nations. Wait, what nations? All nations. Does that include the United States? Yeah. 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 Does it include um, South America, North America, all Africa? All nations. All nations. All nations. You can't argue with the word of God. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled. Kind of a strange old English word to be used there, huh? Maybe God is ahead of us. I believe so. And the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people 
shall not be cut off from the city. Now look at verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as whom he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall, shall, shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley and half of, the, half of the mountain shall be removed toward the north and half towards the south. You guys see what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Those nations are going to come. This whole world is going to come against Jerusalem. And then Jesus Christ himself comes back. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about Revelation chapter 19, that is what's taking place. The Bible says that Jesus is going to trample on the people. Isaiah 63, he's going to just step on. And it says that the blood, their blood will be on his garment. You guys remember in Isaiah, he says, and he had on a garment that was stained with blood. That's not his blood. That is the blood of the people. Amen. Let's look at that, Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Look at this. Revelation chapter 19, and we'll pick it up in verse 11. John sees, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and say, I love people. So I like to say, he makes what? War. He makes war. The Bible says that God is a God of war. He's a man of war. Look at verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of what? Fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in what? Blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Turn back to Isaiah 63. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 63. We'll pick it right up in verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Bozrah to return of Jesus Christ? That is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel? Why are you red in your garments? Why in thy garments like him that treadeth, the, that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone and of the people. There was none with me, for I will tread them in my what? Anger. And trample them in my what? Fury. And their blood, say it out loud, shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will, look at this, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help. Everything we're seeing is a climax to this event. The hatred for the nation of Israel, the, everything we're seeing is bringing us to this one final battle when this whole world comes against God's people. And if you can't see how close it is, I don't know what else to tell you. Turn back to Revelation 19. Now you know, in verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth the sharp two-edged sword, with he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Well, if you read the rest of the chapter, you'll see what the rest happens. Everything in this Bible is pointing to that event. 
everything that is happening in our culture right now is coming to this event that I just read where the wrath of a holy and a righteous God comes back to judge this world for not only for attacking Israel but for the evil that this world has done and we have polluted the earth that belongs to God I know a lot of people think that this book is facetious. How can you look at all the scriptures that we just looked at and say that this book isn't real? Mm. You guys are crazy. I'd read it and it's just like, whoa. It's keeping up with society and it's showing us what is happening step by step by step. We better get ready. We better get ready. If you've never been born again, you're considered an enemy of God and you're an outcast. God loved you. Jesus died for you. You need to be born again. Christians, you better wake up. Stop paying attention to what's going on. It's okay to watch the good news and see how it relates to the word of God because you need to be paying attention to what is, what is at hand. The Bible says we're not to be sleep, we're not to sleep, we're not to be sober, but we're to be what? Vigilant. We're to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. We need to know what is happening in our culture and in our world right now. We talked about this, man, politically, morally, socially. We're seeing the decline of our culture. The next event is the complete turn on Israel. Mm -hmm. Once that takes place, it's over. And Biden supporting the Palestinians mm. did not put us in a good place as a country. It didn't put us in a good place as a country. If you have people that need to be saved, you better get them saved quick. You better get them saved quick. Because we are not in a good place, folks. And I know you want to come to church and me make everyone feel better. I'm telling you what the scriptures say. But if you believe that Bible, you feel better because you know that God wrote it and it's going to come to pass. And you know that Bible says that God, we're not all going to, we're going to be changed in what? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the dead in Christ shall rise what? First, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds, in the air. Amen. 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 And you better realize that this world is not our home. There's a dark moon arising yeah. and troubles on its way. Mm -hmm. Let's bow his word of prayer. Amen. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the consistency and the accuracy of the word of God. We thank you that thy word is truth. and yeah. it, can, it, it, it doesn't just contain truth. It is truth. And we know that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your words will live forever. And Lord, we know that the scriptures must be fulfilled. And as we see everything happening in this world right now, we pray for the Jewish people. We pray for your protection to be upon them. And we do pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that you would encourage those people, the ambassadors, the leaders. We pray for your grace to be upon them. And Lord, we just pray for what is happening in our country right now. <laughs> We pray, God, that you would open up people's eyes to this hatred for the Jews that is creeping up all over this country and all over this world. It's not only a hatred for the Jew, but it's a hatred for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord, we pray, God, for your grace to be upon us. We pray for souls to be saved, that they would be born again, and that people would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior before it's too late. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've done, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I'll have our church will come and Brian will come and do an invitation if you need to come forward. Page 156 if you want to sing along. 157. 157.